Me va que... Ah. لا بس يطبون Did anyone else get kicked off the call? Everyone, I think it said um, the meeting was ended by the host. Probably a technical issue. Yes, there was a technical problem. We we are doing apologize. Hello, I think we just crashed for a minute. Is that right? Briefly. Yeah, just continue. Yes. You're still there, Ganya. You're back with us. Yeah. He's typing in the chat. I think she's back as an attendee rather than a panelist. Maybe we have to promote her again. See, we've lost a number of participants. We were up at 70, we're down at 24, but I guess they're slowly coming back. So yeah, take some time just to dig out the email with the link. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice session, really. <laughs> well, I enjoyed you. these lectures. Maybe you need more than one hour. Yeah. Well, how about we go on until quarter past the hour? Is that right? We have about 20 yeah. minutes or so. Maybe you can compensate the five minutes or 10 minutes because of the technical problems, it doesn't matter. Okay. Thank, thank you, Amal. We just wait- Because we have separate sessions. That means that we are on separate link now. We just wait for- Yes, and if you on. can take your time uh, on your session. I mean, the next sessions are not going to be intersected with yours. They are uh, totally parallel with yours. Mm. Well, we have, we can give Ganya maybe another seven or eight minutes. I think she was about halfway through. Yeah. And then but we the can most the problem uh, that she couldn't go inside the Zoom again. Yeah. And then, then we can hand over to Roseanne because I think we, we need a discussion. Uh, who, uh, Dr. Amal, who, who, who has the problem? Ganya? Yeah, Ganya. Okay. Ganya. Let, me check. Let me check. Yeah, yeah. So Ganya. Mrs. Uh, Sina told that uh, she is uh, entering the Zoom as attendee, not as a panelist. Yeah. But really I enjoyed with uh, Dr. Saja lecture and uh, Sina lecture as well. It's very nice to know about uh, these efforts about refugees and how much uh, the IEB and the International Science Council, UNESCO, unify their efforts to help refugees, scientists, and displaced people. Uh, Dr. Amal, could you check with uh, Dr. Ghania if she received a new Ghania. link? Ghania? I resent her the link again. Dr. Ghania? I think she's hearing us. She must reply in any way, even in chatting. Uh, she might check her email. Uh, she could receive one. I think sometimes the emails go straight to the spam folder or the junk. So she might check over there and let's see. But she, she, she should have a, um, a link now. I resend the session. She said that she, uh, again, I can't uh, see the camera. She can't see the camera. Yeah, because she's logged in as an attendee. I think, Dania, if you're checking your inbox, your link was resent to you. You need to use the special link for a panelist, not the general one for all the participants. Yes, exactly. I think she lives in Italy, right? That's right, yes. Okay, but what about internet at her office or her, her room? It looks like us. <laughs> oh. She's up in the mountains, so here she comes. 
Yes, we have big problem with internet. Actually, this is the first time. I don't know what happened. Okay. Okay, Daniel, <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to we're going to try and make up for lost time and extend the session a little bit. I don't know how much you heard, but I will okay. give you another. I, I don't have much. Okay. I'll give you another seven or eight minutes. When you see my camera come on, you see my pretty face. That's your sign that you have to start wrapping up. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, please carry on. Um, it's all yours. So now when I want to share the, the screen, host display participant screen sharing. Okay, so I can talk, never mind. Hello? Yeah, I think, Ganya, just proceed because it's going to lose some more time. I hear you. Just proceed. Okay, okay. You have the problem from you, not from others. No, I want to share the screen and then the, they told me host displays participant screen sharing. So I can just talk. Can carry mind. on, they'll try and okay. fix that, but carry on just anyway. Just complete you. Okay, uh, so uh, in 2017 with the difficult situation, I, I decided to leave Yemen and uh, uh, I was lucky that I could uh, get a fellowship in Germany under the Philip Schwarz Initiative. And uh, based on my experience, there are some of uh, the difficulties that I have faced, uh, not only me, me and maybe and others when I leave Yemen. First of all, it was the general situation in Yemen, difficult to access to internet and electricity to contact other people and to contact also the people of the, you know, at the fellowship. Difficult movement and travel inside Yemen since Sana'a airport was uh, destroyed. It was very difficult for us to travel to inside Yemen because now the South Yemen wants to be separated. The country was closed, no flight. Uh, all embassies in Yemen were closed and uh, difficulties with the visa interview and entering another country. As we are from Yemen, we could not go any country without visa. And also visa application in another country, it will take, it takes for me, like before I moved to Germany four months in Sudan, and I also I was stuck in Egypt before I came to, 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 to Italy six months. And that is uh, so difficult, you know, for, for how to manage your life in another country. I may and, interrupt you and ask you to check the, sh uh, the screen uh, share. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Uh, okay. So uh, uh, finally, I could reach uh, Germany and uh, I had a good experience in Germany and I was doing my research and uh, I got publication from the research there and uh, uh, I attended uh, several uh, international conferences, I mean, uh, national and one international conferences in Dresden and my research was being selected. Uh, among the best research there. And also I could uh, attending similar conferences and workshop and uh, network connection. Uh, but uh, what happened after that, as you know, this uh, type of fellowship is limited with one year and two years. And I cannot say this is a, a very good help from this organization that support scientists uh, who are in war countries. But the limitation of the fellowship, and I think two years, it's or maybe one year or two years, it's not enough, you know, to be adapted totally to the new system to understand everything. So the, the fellowship is finished in Germany, and I was struggling again, how to find another place, where to go, how to contact. So this is a type of a lot of stressful and instability. So I was searching a lot until I got contact and I was happy to get uh, another fellowship in University of Trento. I started from uh, August 2020. And uh, I think I had, uh, I, I had, uh, I mean, get experience from my fellowship in Germany, how to really improve my skills and how to deal with, uh, with, with the hosting institution. Because in Germany, I was in Wurzburg I was the first case, so I think it was like not easy for me because they, I was the first case as scholar at least in their universities. So uh, when I reached to uh, Toronto, I, I really liked the way that uh, they, 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 they treat me and uh, in terms of how the scientific research was shaped. So I, 
I did my own research, which I am I'm, I'm working in one side and the other side I have been engaged in the research with the team uh, of the university. So in this case, I, I'll be a part of their project. So this is a good, I mean, a good experience for me and a good benefit also for me and for the host institution. Uh, if I am involved in the work that in the you know running project, maybe when the two years or uh, finished of my fellowship, maybe I can get more, uh, I mean, uh, opportunities to have a, a, a fund or to follow up with their research. So based on my experience also, there are some of the difficulties that I had uh, in when I when I settling in a new country with the uh, success at the end. Adaptation of the new place and understanding the system of the research and the running project is very important in the hosting institution. As we are, I mean, as we are scientists, I mean, educated and uh, we are not, I mean, just, uh, uh, we are really, I mean, uh, with good experience because most of us they got their master and phd abroad we can speak english we can also learn many things we can uh, involve, we can be involved in many things so this is uh, this is like uh, uh, adaptation will take uh, i mean uh, will take long time especially I, when i was in germany you have to really understanding the academy it's not easy it's very difficult not only for me from the people also from the German people, like uh, academia or the, 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 the professorship is very difficult uh, I mean, to, to get even for the people from the country. Develop my career and improve my skills to be, I mean, uh, far, not far from the researcher that in the hosting institution, because uh, why I, I, I don't want to be less than them because I am working hard and uh, I am, I have experience from different countries. So like this make me stress a lot. I mean, and this is can affect my, my also personal life, my marriage life, everything, because I'm always thinking, I don't want to be like uh, just in one side. No, I want to be informed and I want to under, uh, I want to, I want to be, uh, to see myself in, in their life, and which is something uh, sometimes good and sometimes tiring. Beyond the research that match with hosting institution with new ideas that help me as a scholar as this and hosting also institution because I don't want to be far from what they are doing so like in Germany I enter new field for me and it was not easy for me to be like to learn it and uh, you know genetic test because I'm from like your science I'm doing genetic society I'm working with DNA and many things that took a lot of time. I never, uh, I mean, really have, I mean, I'm enjoying my work, but life outside the lab, it's, uh, it's very limited. I'm thinking about what happened to my experience, my experiment, to the cells. So it's like uh, a lot of stressful. Doing good research that can be resulted in a publication and scientific conferences, that was my challenges. I have to do, I have to learn more and I have to publish in a good impact factor journals. Because if you, 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 if you are like in, in this level, you have a good publication, you have a good research, you are working with the same team. I think this is a very good for you to be, I mean, to have a new, I mean, opportunity for working. Language issue is also not easy because uh, at least not in the lab, but also outside you need it. Limitation of the fellowship, as we said, two years, it's not enough. In continuity and instability, uh, I mean, but in continuity, there is not, uh, I mean, you, you cannot have like uh, continue research. So whenever you go place, you have to start new area. So I, I did just, uh, from my, my opinion, I just summarize a little bit. How can this gender insight and the two us, I, A, B, and I, S, C, Intuitive support female scientists or female scholars. Uh, I mean, uh, it's you have. I know you have your aim, you have your objective, but it's good also to 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 uh, maybe for the gender, for the gender inside to have uh, uh, something special for female scientists, which, in my opinion or my, in my needs, because we are talking about uh, personal experience. Well, it will be good if there is a link, link the female scholar scientists with all the possible funding and association that can support their continuity in Europe. Engage the female scholar scientists with different activities, 
because we we have experience like organizing organizing workshop and seminars delivering a scientific talk a skilled development that can help the female scientists in, in contribution to the development of their country when they go back like gender issue like i am from science and i like this term gender issue and i want to learn more so if there is any like workshop or something i'll be glad to join how to be a good leader this is also very good because my like sitting in exile it's few years only when the situation in yemen is okay i'll go back and i'd like to be uh, to contribute to develop my country so like this is be, will be very good to, to have experience also from you applying for grant and one we have i know this there is some grant uh, that's available for female scientists or female scientists like Marie Curie and ars uh, arc and I know this type of uh, fellowship of uh, grant, uh, they are very competitive. I, I know I read a lot and uh, I know how the, I mean, the, the requirement, but it will be very good if you link us to, to, you know, maybe a workshop or training or something that can really make us more understanding how to apply for this fellowship and how to write a good, I mean, project so we can uh, we can apply for it and that can can help us because i know that we are a lot and uh, new scientists they will come and you have a lot you help you have to help the others but i think if there is a, if there is a, like another step that can take in mind uh, those people like the, the one who are already here and they already learn and they have experience so you can i mean help help them in such a way uh, and that's what I have, and thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Kenya. And I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you finished on sort of posing some questions for the project and what we might be able to do to, to help women, in particular displaced and refugee scientists. Uh, and I'm glad you also pointed out, you, you carried on from Saja's idea uh, that you are all valued human capital but you especially mentioned that your, your willingness to go back to Yemen and without consistent support during your years away that you, you so far managed to get in Germany and Italy, but it, it's not easy. Thank you for sharing that. Um, without that support, you, you would not maintain that value as a human capital. If you were driving a taxi or cleaning a hotel or whatever it might be that many, many others end up doing. So, so this is why just to demonstrate the importance of, of this project and, and the other organizations, Scholar Rescue Fund, Scholars at Risk and others that, um, that are helping support people in your situations. Um, so let me invite again questions in the preferably in the Q&A. I don't see any there or at the, the moment, but at this point, let me hand over to Roseanne to maybe pose some questions herself and moderate a Q&A session. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks very much, Peter. So um, let me just express thanks to everyone who's spoken to um, Sana for giving us the, um, the background on the project. And thank you very much to our two female scientists, Saja and Ganya, who I think have given us a lot of food for thought. So I think um, what I've heard coming through are some action items possibly for this, this project. Gender Insight is a newcomer trying to bring the gender perspective into it, but I saw very early on in our session someone querying about sex dis disaggregated data, what was the breakdown between men and women. And I think that perhaps an emphasis on sex disaggregated data collection into the future is something that we could really drive forward in this project. I also heard from, from Saja a plea for a, a coordinating role that I think this project could possibly play. Coordination between um, scientists and governments and universities, institutions, um, so that we can get, you know, better information flow um, going. I think I also heard about a, a networking amongst the scientists coming through. 
a plea particularly for female scientists to be networked, but maybe it could be more general um, as well. And then um, some specific pleas for, for mentoring, um, assistance with understanding the scientific culture of the country in which um, they find themselves. And, and just reflecting on what Ganya has just said about um, the, the path that she took when she was navigating her, her route through to the university where she's currently is, there's clearly um, quite a, a complex individual pathway until they find their, their current position. And I think that um, people can learn from that. You know, it, you seem to go from fellowship to fellowship. So just an examples of what fellowships are available and emphasizing that I think clearly is, is going to be a very important task. I don't see any questions in the, in the chat room. Um, I'm just having a look here. Um, we've a specific question here that's come up to to, to Ganya, and maybe Ganya, I can pose this to you. It comes from Lynette, and she says, how do you plan to use the privilege that you've got to help other women refugees in your country? I think that's a very, very useful um, question. So Ganya, do you want to um, give a, an answer to Lynette yes. on this? Uh, okay, I, I can answer this. Uh, um, Actually, uh, uh, since I got the fellowship, I can talk. Since I got the fellowship and I was in Germany, uh, because to be honest, I was I did not have any idea about this organization and about scholar at risk. Because when I get the fellowship to Germany, it was by network. Uh, it was a result for the Al Safir Foundation Award. Uh, one professor contacted me from Germany and he linked me to University of Wurzburg and I got it. So last time I did not have idea. While I reached Germany and I sit for uh, a network and I know what, what are the organization uh, that uh, helping the people. And then also we had me and Saja, we had uh, Science in Exile, with, uh, I mean, movie and documentary uh, that was very helpful because it has all uh, the links of the organization. So I, I tried to separate it to, to other colleges like uh, men and women. And I link them with the, with the so scholar at risk and scholar receive fund and the two of my friends, uh, they, they could get it, a woman, uh, they could get it to, to Egypt. And the two also of my uh, colleagues, Neil, the, they could get the fellowship, one to Malaysia and one to, to, to Germany. I mean, the, the problem that in Yemen, uh, maybe how to say, uh, there is a problem because this type of fellowship, it is very competitive. And if you want to apply, you have to be really like, uh, uh, like uh, have a scientific uh, publication with good impact factor, have language, in Yemen, maybe only few of us, like we are few of us, those who are uh, finalized their PhD from outside in Yemen, and they have publication. Uh, but most of the friends that I know, they did their uh, master and PhD maybe in Arabic country, and they don't have publication. So I have like, personally, I have helped almost seven friends uh, to apply. Uh, they, they were women to apply for uh, uh, scholar rescue fund, but their application has been rejected because they don't have publication. So this in Yemen, it's like, uh, and also we don't have much scholar at risk from, uh, uh, from Yemen outside, we are only few. So if you can see like, uh, what everybody wants to go out from Yemen, to be honest, like all the colleges, uh, Dr. Ghani help us, but how to help them? Because the fellowship that I was in, the Philip Schwartz, that you cannot apply by yourself only third party have to apply for you. So this is very difficult to find like a host institution uh, with our good, uh, I mean, background, I mean, not background, good CV in science. We don't have publication and we don't have this thing, but I'm doing my best to, to, to help them by giving them the links and giving them recommendation letter and try to help them how they can write the personal statement, how they can write the risk assessment. And uh, a few of them they could get. One, I, I mean, 
in in and also i can i really can i re, i need to help but i cannot help more than that <laughs> okay nice. yeah thanks i see there's another question being posed here by phyllis she's posted perhaps to all the panelists but perhaps i'm going to address it to to sina um do refugees cover migrants and asylum seekers do you ask for documentation to verify status what are the challenges you face and how have you resolved them Perhaps your best place to address it, Sina. Thanks, Roselle. Well, I mean, first of all, I should say that as we, since we don't provide any direct support, um, you know, it's not, we're not in a place that we have to actually verify uh, the status in terms of asking for documentation, for example, as uh, Phyllis mentioned. I think that the most important issue there is perhaps whether uh, the idea of refugees covers migrants and asylum seekers. And that's something that's really complex that uh, Peter mentioned earlier. Um, you know, I think refugees, that's both a legal category and an identity marker, right? So there's the chance that these overlap a lot. We talk also about forcibly displaced people when we want to discuss individuals who have been forcibly displaced by war or persecution, but have not sought refugee status, or perhaps they were rejected or perhaps they do not want to be identified as such. So perhaps they just apply for normal you know, student visas or postdoctoral fellowships, so they're not technically refugees. So in a way, well, yes, absolutely. Refugees can cover those categories if those individuals self-identify as such. Um, asylum seekers specifically, that's, that will be the legal category where somebody's asylum claim is uh, in limbo. So uh, I think that would definitely be something that we would be um, concerned with in our initiative. As for migrants, I mean, yes and no. I think that the, there's a very fine line between forced displacement and voluntary migration sometimes. So it's not that easy to say, okay, you are a refugee <clears throat> or forcibly displaced and you're just a migrant because very many times migrants will actually have had really serious reasons for migrating or you know, man-made poverty and persecution that is slightly more indirect. So in a way they're migrants, but if their um, profiles were of a certain type, then absolutely, absolutely they would um, fall in our in our project. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. I see I've got two hands up. So I'm gonna ask Sarja to go first and then Peter, and then I'm not sure whether we will need to end after that. So we should just watch our time. Sarja, go ahead, please. Okay, just say quickly, because I read something about that Iranian and how we can um, help uh, people who need this help, uh, these uh, scientists. So I think just net connections is very important I, uh, issue here. Just keep uh, knock uh, knock all doors, uh, keep your windows all all are open. Uh, just to try a lot a lot because net connections and meeting new people, meeting new people will open a new opportunities for you and new chances for anyone who in need for this uh, chances. And the other issues, just quickly. I uh, again, I want to thanks all organizations and programs that help. <clears throat> <clears throat> scientists, scholars, uh, scientists at risk or uh, displaced scientists, because they are um, people who um, and uh, people who support these programs or institutions, they help us indirectly or directly. So just to um, the main issue here, to how to help this um, organization and support the, uh, them and to enhance the, uh, the uh, coordination or the uh, to, co uh, to uh, or coordinate uh, with the institutions um, in the host country in a proper way. This just briefly. Thanks, Saja. Peter? Um, yes, thank you. Well, well just to hello, carry hello. on about you, this idea of you coordination. Wait, you wait, wait, wait. Because I'm having Sorry, can we just mute if you're not speaking? Go, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. She has to know, yes, about coordination. So TWAS has just, as part of this project, created a, a well, sort of hub on its website where we're collating all this information together. Um, in the background, we are preparing a sort of list with links of a lot of the opportunities that are available whether it's the Scholar Rescue Fund, Scholars at Risk have been mentioned, Ganya in Germany was supported by the Philip Schwartz Initiative. There are others in France, PAUSE, for example. Um, and, and often people, whether they're migrants, displaced, um, asylum seekers, 
they don't know where to go first. And there, there are a lot of resources becoming available, but they're not connected together. Um, and that is one of the, the jobs that we've taken on as, as TWAS to, to try and have that sort of central point of reference at least. So no matter how you identify yourself, um, the resources are the same, and then you, you, you would have to check the sort of the small print, if you like, with each one and see how you would be eligible to apply for support there. So that, that is something that is coming through the, this project. Thank you very much, Peter. So I see you've shared the web link and then the conference organizers have shared it more widely. So you can go there as, and have a look at the website. So I think let me draw this session to a close and thank our panelists very much. I think we've just begun this conversation. There is so much more that we need to talk about. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has realized that today is a very auspicious day. It's the, the day of women in science. So um, I think it was very appropriate that we were slotted in this slot. Thank you very much to Amal for um, allowing us to make this presentation and we hope that we will maintain this connection. Thank you. I would like to thank you all, all of you for you, Professor Roseanne, to accept my invitation to talk at this conference. And I think it will be a good start between us for more conferences on refugees and gender issues. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Saja, uh, Mrs. Sena, Dr. Bita, Dr. Gania. And I think it's the beginning. We will do a lot together, inshallah, in the future. Thanks a lot. I'm touched really you. with all stories. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon for all. Uh, I think uh, all of us are uh, at the same time zone. So that, that good afternoon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amal. Take care. Thanks. Thank Bye. you, Amal. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.